This is an example of a DC mesh solutions problem in Circuit Tutor at level 2. So we're going to enter the DC, DC mesh solutions tutorial and click on the medium exercise button. Notice we do have, of course, examples at all the different levels of difficulty. And now we have the instructions if we want to review those. So in this type of problem, we are being given the KVL equations um, for this circuit. So we do not need to write those. However, we do need to write a current constraint equation. In this case, we have one current source. So we will need to write an equation uh, for that. And we also have a single SOT variable. So we will need to write an equation for the SOT voltage. So let's do that. First, let's do the current constraint equation. And we can observe that there is one current through this current source. And so that will just be equal to the value of the source, which is 7 amps. And this will be I1. However, we do notice that this current is flowing opposite to the direction of the source because it's going clockwise. And this is pointing counterclockwise. So we will need a negative sign. It's always important to check the polarity of those equations. So we'll check that. Then we need to write a SOT variable equation for the resistor voltage across the 6 ohm resistor, which is V0. So we'll select SOT branch voltage. And V0, therefore, is going to be equal to, and now we see that there are two mesh currents going through that uh, resistor. Therefore, we will need a difference of mesh currents. And using passive sign convention, we want the net current flowing in to the positive terminal at V0. So that will be I1 minus I2, since I2 is opposite. Well, I2 has active sign convention. So we want to have I1 minus I2. And then that multiplies the 6 ohms, the very 6 ohms. So let's check that equation. And that is correct. So now we've entered all of the required equations for the circuit. So let's click No More Equations. Now this is the new part in the solutions tutorial, which is that we need to now write simplified forms of these equations. And we are allowed to, if we need to, to multiply an equation by a constant, although that probably won't be necessary here. Um, we are not allowed to make a substitution from one equation to another or to combine equations and make a linear combination. That is not permitted in Circuit Tutor. So we're going to enter each of these three equations. We're not entering the SOT variable equation. Um, that one will be used later in the process. So we're just doing. Um, the current constraint and KVL equations now. So the first equation just says that I1 is negative 7 amps. So I1 has a coefficient of 1, and then the constant value will be negative 7. The second equation, we see the coefficient of I1, we have a negative 6, and that's it. So we put negative 6 there. And notice we don't put any units in these text boxes, these are strictly the numbers. So the units have been dropped. Then uh, the I2 has a coefficient of 6 plus 3 plus another 3, so that'll be a total of 12. And then I3 has a coefficient of minus 3. And there is no constant term or voltage source in this equation, so the right-hand side is just 0. Then the last equation, we have I, I2 will have a coefficient of negative 3. There's no I1. And I3 has a coefficient of 3 plus 8, which will be 11. And the constant term in this case comes from the voltage source, so we subtract that from both sides, and that'll give us a negative 7 on the right-hand side. So now we will check those equations, and they are correct. Now the next step will be to transform these into a matrix equation. And so we use this form to do that. And rather than retyping those, we can simply click the button that says copy from the simplified equations, just to save us the time of retyping all of those numbers. 
And of course we know that this means that one times i1 plus zero times i2 plus zero times i3 is equal to negative seven. That's the first equation and then so forth. Uh, the third equation would be zero i1 minus three i2 plus 11 i3. That's equal to the negative seven. So each row of the matrix equation represents one of the original uh, simplified equations. So we'll check that and that is correct. And now we need to solve this equation. Now we could use uh, Gaussian elimination on something like this, and that's possible certainly, but it may be simpler in this case since we know that the first equation is very simple. It just gives us a value for I1. It may be easier just to substitute that value into the second two equations. And, and in fact, it's only involved in the, the second equation. Um, and that'll give us a two by two system, which is easy to solve by elementary methods and really matrices are probably overkill uh, for this problem. Now your instructor may ask you to turn in um, your algebraic solution, and if so, then you should keep that and turn that in to your instructor. Um, otherwise, it's a good idea just to keep a record of your uh, work written out neatly so that you have a good record of that. Okay, so let's go now to the algebra. And what I'm going to do here is simply to uh, copy the more complicated equations here. Um, actually, you can probably do it right here. So negative 6i1 plus 12i2 minus 3i3 is equal to 0. So I've just rewritten that here. I've also written the equation that says i1 equals negative 7. And as I said, I'm just going to take that value and substitute it in here. So we just have the 12i2 minus 3i3 is now equal to 6i1 after adding that to both sides and plug in the value of i1 is negative 7 so that will be negative 42 so that's our first equation and then the second equation I'm just rewriting um, here is negative 3 uh, well actually uh, here negative 3i2 plus 11i3 is equal to negative 7 so we write that there and so now we need to solve these two simultaneous equations just a 2 by 2 system so I could for example solve the top one for i2 and plug that into this one to eliminate i2 and solve for i3. Or I could do the opposite, solve this one for one of the two variables and plug it in here. Um, there's many ways of doing this. What I'm going to do is simply to multiply the second equation by this coefficient divided by this one. In other words, 12 divided by negative three, which of course is just negative four. And by multiplying that, then I can subtract, that'll make this 12, and so then I just subtract this one from this one after multiplying and that will cancel out the i2 terms and allow me to solve easily for i3. So as I subtract these two things um, that of course will cancel this term and then I have negative 3 um, and then I multiply by negative 4 here so that's going to be negative 44 so I add 44 to negative 3 to get 41 okay, because I have a negative and a negative. And over here I have the negative 42 and there um, I will add that to uh, multiplying this by negative uh, 4. So I have 28 added to negative 42. Uh, sorry, and then subtracting that. So that will give me uh, negative 70 when I subtract the uh, 28 from 42. It will give me negative 70. And then I just divide here. So I3 will be negative 70 over 41 or negative 1.707 amps. So now I've added the unit back in. Now I can use either one of these equations to solve for I2, just using elementary algebra. And so uh, let's choose the second one, for example. I'll write negative 3I2. And I'll bring this term over to the right-hand side, since we know I3 now. Um, and I'm not multiplying it now. I'm just using the original equation. So we have minus 11I3. And I3, I can plug in, is the minus 1.707 and then subtracting the negative 7 that was originally there. And so doing that computation on a calculator just gives me 11.78. And then just dividing both sides by negative 3 gives me I2 is equal to negative 3.926. So now we have um, all three of the mesh currents. So we can go and enter those on this form. So I1 is just negative 7. I2 is negative 3.926. And 
and I3 is negative 1.707. And again, I did carry these through to four digits just to make sure I have sufficient accuracy in case of any problems with round off error. So we'll check those answers now. And notice, by the way, that I could have skipped this step had I wanted to just go to the final value and just enter the value of the SOT variable. But just to make sure, I decided to check these first. So if you want to skip it, you can do that. And you could come back if you needed to um, and do this. But I'm just going to check it here. So that is correct. And of course, if you're doing something in the real world, you won't have a computer to check that for you. But what you could do, of course, is to take these three values and substitute them back into each of the original equations. Probably it would be best to go back to these equations, uh, since you haven't, you might have made a mistake going from here to here, and just make sure that those are, in fact, satisfied. So that would be a way of checking it if you're doing this problem on an exam, for example. Okay, so next we need to calculate the SOT quantity. So we're going to use the SOT variable equation that we haven't used yet. That says B0 is I1 minus I2, the quantity times 6 ohms. So we just do that math using these values of I1 and I2. So we would take the negative 7 and subtract negative 3.927, which would be, of course, just adding the absolute value of that, and then multiply the result uh, times 6 ohms. And that will give us approximately uh, negative 18.44. So I'll enter that here for the voltage. And we check that, and that is in fact correct. So that does complete the problem. And if you want to have a detailed explanation, for example, of the equations, including the KVL equations, then you could click yes here.